For the majority of the past five years, I have run a YouTube channel while maintaining a full-time job. I get a lot of questions about how exactly I managed that, so in this video, I'm gonna share some tactics, some mindset shifts, some things that you can do to help you to also do that. There are gonna be some specific ways to juggle your workload, and then also some slightly more high-level ways to help you to juggle YouTube and a full-time job. So my first piece of advice is to utilize your mornings or your nights. This is just a given with any side hustle, you are going to be working beyond your work hours. So I usually wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning and it's not unusual if before work I'm filming some b-roll, finishing editing a video, filming a video, whatever was required of me that day. So another thing that I actually did to make this a little easier for myself is I originally started at 8 a.m. at my job, so I actually changed that to 9 a.m. so I would get more time in the morning, in particular in the winter, so that if I did need to film anything, I did have a small window there where the sun was out and I would be able to film. If you are trying to juggle a full-time job and YouTube at the same time, you absolutely need to utilize those windows. That's probably not really something that I need to tell you, but you just need to be prepared that you're going to be doing work days that aren't the standard eight hours. They're gonna be 10, 11 hours. But at the end of the day, you're going to be able to say that you did something to move yourself towards your goals today. And that feeling of satisfaction is priceless. The next thing that you should be prepared to get rid of if you want to juggle a full-time job and YouTube is FOMO. You're going to spend a number, a lot of Saturdays and Sundays filming, writing, whatever you need to do to get, keep your YouTube channel running. And that means that you might need to turn down going to breakfast with your friends or going out on a Saturday night. Not all the time, by all means, you can still maintain a life and YouTube and a job, but there are going to be times when you need to prioritize work over your friends because your work life is kind of eating into your personal life. As long as you have good friends and they're supportive people and they know what you're doing, they're gonna be completely fine. So usually for me, I would try to utilize my mornings for doing YouTube on the weekends, and then my afternoons would be for hanging out with friends. So if a friend ever wanted to hang out like for breakfast, I'd just be like, oh, let's do dinner instead or lunch. Just because the morning is when there is the most light in my room, and also it's just my most productive time, so I don't wanna give it up. My next piece of advice, and I wish that I had taken this myself sooner, is to get smarter with your production and your schedule. This is going to make such a difference in the long run if you get organized from the get-go, rather than just like doing whatever comes as it comes. When you're not full-time focused on YouTube, and even when you are full-time focused on YouTube, it is so helpful to have some sort of calendar and some awareness of what is coming up, what videos you're making in the near future. It is incredibly helpful to have a set time when you film, when you write, when you edit, etc, etc. 110% use batching. It is going to change your life. Write three video plans at a time, film three videos at a time, edit three videos at a time, or do more if you can. I think when you're doing a lot, it is really hard to take a step back and look at how you could be doing what you're doing more effectively. So when you're juggling a job, YouTube friends, all of the rest of it, you get so involved in the doing that you forget to take a step back and put your CEO hat on and be like, okay, how can I do this? in a more effective way, but I really encourage you to take out the time to do that. It's gonna make a huge difference in the long run. My next piece of advice is a little bit more vague, but I feel like it made a huge difference for me, and that is surround yourself with really supportive human beings. I think this is essential for any growing YouTuber. When I had about 3,000 subscribers, I had a boyfriend partner who was saying things like, oh, I can't wait till you're a full-time YouTuber. Like, I'm ready. This is gonna be so exciting. Like, you're doing so well. I had a best friend that bought me cupcakes at like every single mini milestone that I had that didn't even blink when I talked about YouTube. Like, yeah, this is what I'm gonna be doing with my life. Having people around you who believe in you, especially when you are in the thick of it, is so essential to your success. I'm a big believer in people performing to the expectations that you give them. So if you have low expectations for someone, they're probably going to perform to that standard. If you have high expectations, expectations of someone, they're probably going to perform to that standard. If you believe that someone that is close to you is going to succeed and you express that belief on a regular basis, I genuinely think they're like 70% more likely to succeed. So if the people that are close to you aren't supportive, go and find different people. I'm not saying ditch all of your friends, but go and find a YouTube group filled with YouTubers who have strong core beliefs, who are supportive, who have that faith. And as a side note, believe in yourself because no one else is going to believe in you if you don't believe in you. My partner and my friends weren't the only people talking about my future success. I 
was also talking about my future success, like it was a guaranteed thing to happen, no matter how pretentious it sounded at the time. Next up, be incredibly flexible and compassionate with yourself. It is incredibly difficult to maintain a job, a life, and a YouTube channel. And there are some people out there that maintain even more things than that, like a child or a university degree. It's absolutely crazy. If you can only post one video a month, post one video a month. If you can't really stick to an upload schedule every single week, just upload when you can every week. The more pressure you put on yourself to upload, 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 do more, do more, do more, the more YouTube is gonna start to feel more like a job, more like just an unnecessary pressure in your life. And you'll start to feel really overwhelmed and really helpless. Those are not fun feelings when you're trying to live a creative life. So where you can try to give yourself a lot of self-compassion and a lot of flexibility where you can afford to. When you're in the smaller stages of YouTube, it is good because you don't have quite so many people relying on you to stick to schedules, to upload super regularly. So sort of use that time as like a learning and see how you grow. If you liked this video, you might also like my video on how to be a more productive YouTuber. I'm gonna have that linked on the screen, so that'll be really helpful for you if you are working a full-time job. 